So you're out for a stroll one morning, maybe taking the dog for a walk, or maybe you're even out looking for deer and you come across a track that looks like this. And you say, whoa, there's a deer track. And look, the hoof is splayed. And look, those dew claws, those little marks in the back are showing up. Is this a big buck? And the answer, of course, is no. This is actually a little yearling. And the fact that we're seeing splay here and the fact that we are seeing dew claws does not tell us that it is a buck or a male deer, but it does tell us something. So we are going to look at some actual deer legs and we're gonna talk about this and what it does tell us and uh, uh, some other things to actually help us differentiate. Let's look at some deer legs. Just so you know, these came off of one of the hundreds and hundreds of winter kill deer uh, that happened after the really big winter we had here in northern Utah a couple years ago and they live in the freezer for educational purposes. This is the front leg and the hind leg of a little doe and you can see the dew claws that we've just been talking about on both the front and the hind. Take a look at this. Look at how they are bigger, just more massive and set closer to the hoof itself on the front leg versus smaller and set farther up the leg on the hind foot. So Deer walk on the front leg on the tips of the middle finger and ring finger. It's actually on the fingernails of the riddle, middle and ring finger. And the dew claws are the pointer finger and the pinky finger. They have evolved entirely away from a thumb. And this long bone here, this is pretty cool. This is all of these bones in our hand fused into one long cannon bone. And that cannon bone on both the front and hind leg are a key feature in deer beds or any ruminant beds around the planet, which is cool. We'll make a video about that someday. When a deer is walking or standing, take a look at where the dew claws are on this front leg in relation to the ground itself. This is gonna be the same for a giant buck, for a doe, for a yearling, or for a fawn. Look at how much distance there is between the dew claw and the ground itself. So there's only two things that are gonna happen in order for those dew claws to register. One, that foot is actually going to sink deep enough in that those dew claws will actually poke into the ground. Or second, that foot is going to be coming down at an angle and with more force so that those dew claws are actually registering back there in that fashion. Now, think about this as well. If the ground is soft and that foot sinks in, look at where these dew claws are going to register. They're going to register very close behind the actual hoof itself because that's how they're positioned on the leg. As opposed to coming in at a steep angle with a lot of force and landing back here. And now look at the distance between the dew claw and the back of the hoof in that situation. And this is so cool. When a deer is just standing, their cleats of that hoof are held close together. This is what lends to that nice heart shape appearance. However, check this out. When that foot comes in at an angle and with force, those cleats naturally splay out. And looking from the side here, that comes in, they splay out for traction. We also have flexing through the foot here. So you can see that here, flexing through the foot there. Look at what that's doing. And then those dew claws are coming into contact in that classic fast moving deer appearance, shoving off and there you go. Let's return to these tracks and look at them through this perspective of understanding the physiology of deer. We look down and there are the dew claws showing up and there is that splayed hoof. Now, we just ask ourselves one question. Did this foot sink into deep ground so that those dew claws showed up? All of us can look at this immediately and say no. And that tells us immediately this deer was moving fast, which is so cool. Also just note, take a look at the distance between the hoof and those dew claws. Remember that big space when that foot is extended and flexed out? There we see it and we now have this solid understanding. So is this a buck? Well, it could be, but it could also be a doe. This is still very useful information to be able to look down and recognize this as a fast moving deer because it allows us to ask a question. And even if we can't answer it, it still guides our eyes. And that is, 
why are they doing this? Is this interactions between deer? Did dogs chase these deer? Did we push these deer out ahead? In part two, we will look at things that are much more useful for differentiating between bucks and does or bulls and cows, including things like the difference in the size of the front and hind hooves in mature animals or the social structure or behavioral aspects that leave associated sign for us to find that is much more telling. We'll also just consider things like our baseline understanding of age class of those animals throughout the year and different seasons. So thanks for checking this out and I'll see you again next time.